Welcome to the 15th recorded lecture for Computer Programming 1. In this lecture, we're going to continue where we left off in the last lecture, and we're going to look at some if tests, some more complicated if tests, and uh, different ways that we can combine if tests together. Unfortunately, in the hotel where I'm staying right now, the internet's been out for a while, so I can't... Uh, <laughs> I can't show my example, but luckily I showed that in the previous lecture. So uh, I have it all written down. We can go from there. So I still have the page up, but I don't think it will let me. Maybe it didn't cache everything locally. But in any case, let's take a look at some if tests. One more thing that I want to set up is the transmission. And one thing that uh, is a little bit annoying, and this is like real life, is that I want a stick shift, and stick shifts in the configuration I want are only available on the East Coast. They don't sell them in Cincinnati. So we're going to take a look at an if test that will that will say if I'm in Cincinnati, I can't have a, a stick shift. So first, I'll define an array string transmission equals new string, and this will have four items in it. Then we'll say transmission uh, zero equals five speed manual. Okay. Oops, sorry. Whoops. Wrong place there. Transmission one equals four speed automatic. Transmission two equals Five speed automatic and transmission three equals six speed manual. So these are the three, these are the four different transmission types that you can get on the e Prompt the user and say, What transmission do you want? But I also have to remember if the user says, I am in uh, 45202, then that third option is not an option. So, uh, what I'll do is I'll do a J option pane and say, what is your zip code? Okay. Uh, okay, let's see. String zip equals, there we go. Okay, uh, now I'm going to put an if test here, but first let's see where we're going to go with this. We're eventually going to ask the user for a transmission type. Let me go ahead and do that transmission prompt now. Joption pane, show input dialog. Okay, we want to do the big one here, so we're going to do null, comma. Uh, okay, choose a transmission type, comma. Select a transmission type from this list comma, J option pane, question dot message, null, and then let's see, our transmission array, what did we call that? I called it transmission. Let me call it, let me change the name of that, all transmissions. I usually like to have some name that indicates it's a collection, so many times I'll put all before, there we go, that looks a little bit better. Variable names should definitely be descriptive. They should be accurate for what they're holding. So all transmissions is a collection holding all transmissions. Okay, all transmissions, and then all transmissions uh, will make zero our default operation. And there we go. And we know that we want to store this as a string. Transmission equals, and then we need to cast string like so. So between the question of what's your zip code and the question of choose a transmission, we need to say, does the uh, user live in, we'll say, Cincinnati? Now, we could, we could potentially have an if test like this. If zip equals 45202, okay. Open curly, close curly, and then what we do is we do a little magic here. Hang on one second. My, nope, 
Sorry, my uh, net being slowed down there. What I can do is I can reassign. I can reassign all transmissions and make it a string array of only three, and then simply take off that last option. Okay. What does it not like here? Uh, if zip equals four five. Oh, I see. I have the wrong symbol. I have a curly. Should be a paren. Oh, come on. There we go. I could do this, but the uh, and remember when comparing strings, we do not use the double equal sign. We can only use the double equal when comparing primitives, so mostly numbers. That's the only time we can use the double equals. For string, we have to use equals as a uh, as a method, and this equals means it has to be an exact match. Now, the trick is, if I did it like this, I would have to put every single zip code in the zip test in Cincinnati. I can use a little trick. I can use something a little bit goofy, but it will work. What I'll say is zip index of, with a capital O, and then 452. We know that most Cincinnati zip codes start with 452, so I'll just say cover all Cincinnati zip codes with zip index of 452. Now, remember what the index of does. Think about when we were doing strings and we were doing index of to find comma locations. Index of will return to us the position within a string that it was able to find this substring. In other words, it will return to us the position in the string called zip where it was able to find the substring 452. If it cannot find it, it will return a minus 1. So this method, index of, is always returning a number. And as you see, I'm currently getting a red line on my, on my if test here because an if test requires a true or a false. We can't give it a number. It has to be a true or a false. Now, if index of cannot find this substring within this variable, what it will do is it will return minus 1. So I have to do a weird comparison here. I have to say if zip index of 452 uh, does not equal, which is exclamation equal, actually wait a minute, uh, does not equal minus 1, then we'll go ahead and perform the logic in here. So. Uh, you have to look at this carefully. Zip index of is going to return minus 1 if it cannot find 452 in the zip. If it can find 452 in the zip, then it's going to return something other than minus 1. So what I'm saying is, if you can find 452 within the zip, then it must be a Cincinnati zip code. And then I need to limit the I need to limit the transmission types. Okay, so zip index of 452 does not equal minus one means it was able to find 452 somewhere in the zip code. That's confusing, and we need to we need to put a comment here so that we can remember why we did it this way. Okay, zip index of will return a number other than minus 1 if it found 452 in the zip. So this test will evaluate to true only if the zip contains 452, which indicates that it is a Cincinnati area zip code and thus the six speed manual transmission is not available. That one's a bit tricky. Yeah, I have to think through it a few times. Available. There. Jeez. Okay. So what we'll do is now we will reassign the variable all transmissions to a limited set of transmissions. I also want to note that as it is right now, this is a single alternative selection. Notice that we only take action if it is a Cincinnati zip code. There is no else part, there is no else if. 
So if it's not a Cincinnati zip code, it will operate as usual. In other words, it won't do anything special. This is a single alternative selection. It's a decision. If that decision evaluates to true, it executes these lines. If that decision executes, uh, evaluates to fault, false, it won't execute any of the lines. So I'm going to save and I'm going to go ahead and run this and let's see, let's run it a couple times and, and see what output we get. Okay, one more moment and run. We already know about the drivetrain and the body type, so I'll kind of go through those quickly. Access cab, 4x2, short bed. Now, what is your zip code? I'm going to go ahead and say 45202. And the next box that asks us for transmission should not have the six-speed manual. How do we do? Perfect. Okay. Now let me run this again. And this time, I will choose a zip code that does not have 45202. So 10017. And now, take a look. Six-speed manual transmission is an option. Now, obviously, this isn't foolproof because we could have a zip code like 10452. So uh, there are things that we can do to say, does it begin with 452? There are several other options. As a matter of fact, that might even be more clear. Zip. Perfect. That's even better. Let's do that because that's going to make it even better. Uh, I'm going to comment out this line, but leave it so that you'll have it for reference. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use begins with or starts with rather. And the nice thing is that starts with evaluates to a boolean. Either it does start with 452 or it does not. Okay, so we don't need to compare to negative one here. We can just take the value that it gives us. Okay, an alternative use the starts with method, which will return a boolean. Okay, and save. Let's try this again. So we run, and again, we should see a similar output. Access cab, 4x2, short bed. Zip code, we'll do 45202. Okay, transmission type, 6-speed is not on there. Okay, if I run again, access cab, 4x2, short bed, 10452. And we have six-speed manual. So that's a little more foolproof way to do it. Again, this is what we'll call a single alternative selection because it is only doing an operation if this test evaluates to true. If the test evaluates to false, then it will not do that operation. Not, it will not do any operation. The alternative of a single alternative selection is a dual alternative selection, where we do one thing if it's true, another thing if it's false. And for that, we'll add an else clause. And what we're going to do is it's kind of a waste to create and declare this array here and then rewrite it here. So what I'm going to do is I am simply going to declare the array up above, and I'm going to cut. Okay, and then we'll assign it within the if test. Okay, all transmissions equals new string for. Uh, my tabs are a bit off now, so I'm going to do Alt Shift F, which in NetBeans will auto format. Uh, and there we go. So notice here, this is a bit more efficient operation. As a matter of fact, I'm going to bring this declaration down a little bit. We'll put the declaration here. Okay. Declare the array that will hold the transmission options. Now notice we're only assigning values to the array once, maximum. If it's 452, we make it an array of size 3, and we put the three valid transmissions in there. If the zip code does not start with 452, then we make it an array of size 4, and we put four transmissions in there. One trick with an array is that we have to know how big we want it to be ahead of time, which is why I have to move this line where we're actually initializing the array. I have to move that in the if test where I know how many items I'm going to put in there. So 
we declare and we initialize in separate steps here. Remember declare means a type and a variable name. And if we have a type followed by square brackets, that means it's an array or a collection of multiple pieces of data of the same type. So we declare and then we initialize based on the zip code choice. So I save and once again we'll run again. Okay, access cabs fine, 4x2 short bed, 45249. Okay, and our transmission, we have five options. Okay, I run again. Access cab, 4x2 short bed spine, 10452. That would, that would theoretically be on the East Coast, probably somewhere in New York State. Okay, and there we go, six feet. So notice a dual alternative selection. Okay, that one's not too bad. The next few if tests are going to get a little bit more complicated. And if I had internet access, I would show this. Again, I'll see if maybe it cached. But we know that a regular cab cannot be 4x4. Four four. Let me see if this will work. Hopefully, it, hopefully this is all cached locally. Or maybe not. Well, let's see. Okay. An access cab cannot be a 4x2 pre runner. Okay. Uh, a double cab can be 4x2 pre runner or 4x4, but cannot be 4x2. If we choose the long bed option, it also can't be 4x2 or 4x2 pre runner. So we see a lot of different choices we have to make when we're validating this. What is the cab type? What is the drivetrain? And what is the bed length? And what we need to do is after we've let the user make these selections, we need to do a validation and say, have you chosen a valid combination? So that's what we'll take a look at next, but that's going to require a more complicated if test. If tests can be nested. In other words, we can put an if test within an if test. Or we can use these operators that are called AND and OR to combine if tests together. Both of them work the same way. It's just a matter of how much typing we want to do. So we'll take a look at it the long way. That might make the most sense at first. Then we'll consolidate and we'll do things the shorter way. Well, I had to pause the recording there for just a moment. And in that time, my internet connection came back. So before we get on to advanced if test, take a look and you'll see that with the double cab, these are the three transmission options when I have 45249. But as soon as I change to 10017, which is Manhattan, the page refreshes and I'll make those same selections again. Double cab 4x4. Four and we'll see when it comes up, double cab 4x4. Four four. Notice there's now a fourth option, the six-speed manual. So that's based on the zip code. So in real life, that's how this works. It will take a look at our zip code, determine what region we're in, and then determine what trucks are available. So there we have it. Okay, continuing on then, the first thing we'll do is we'll see if we have a regular cab, and this will take a moment, if we have a regular cab, we can do a regular cab in 4x2 or 4x4, but not the 4x2 pre-runner. So, we probably are going to need to put our validation after we have allowed the user to choose all the options. Now, we could be smart about it and say, if you've chosen this option, then we're not going to let you choose another. But, needless to say, this is a demonstration of if tests. So, what I'm going to say here... I'm going to say validate that the user has a valid drive train if the user selected a regular cab. And you see right there we have an if, if the user selected a regular cab. So now we know how to get started. If, uh, what was our variable? I think it was cab type or selected cab. If selected cab. Remember when we're comparing strings, we have to use equals as a method. Equals, 
I have two options here. One is I can type in regular cab as text. I'll do that for this example, but that's not a good idea generally because you see now it's redundant. Now we have regular cab in two different places. And if I were to simply change the spelling or something on this, it would then invalidate my if test. My if test would be useless. So it would be better to uh, actually just have this defined one place and reuse it throughout our program. That's what we'll do on the next example. Okay, if the user has a regular cab, now we need to make sure that the user did not select the 4x2 pre-runner. So now I'll say if, uh, let's see, I think that was selected drivetrain and 4x2 pre-runner. So I'll grab that, copy that. If selected drive train uh, dot equals, and again, copy and paste is not a good idea here. There are better ways to handle this. Uh, we'll see what those better ways are in just a moment. If selected drive train equals four by two pre runner, then we'll put a J option pane, show message dialog, and say, sorry, but. Uh, then I'll say 4 by 2 pre-runner is not available on the regular cab. Here I go again. Notice, uh, oh, sorry, for a message dialog, I have to put null first. Uh, notice that once again, I have copied and pasted 4 by 2 pre-runner and regular cab. Okay, I've copied and pasted that. That's not a good idea. If they were to change the name of regular cab, then uh, I would have to change it in multiple places. Odds are I would forget one of them, and we would have a bug in our program. And I can tell you from experience that it can take many, many, many hours to find a bug, as opposed to just doing it the right way the first time. That sounds kind of obvious, but trust me, there are, I can think of an example just this week, where I made a change to a program that took me about four days to diagnose, find, and fix, where had the original developer just done it right, it would have taken about five minutes. So we really have to do anything we can to prevent bugs. Again, this is kind of the not good way. We'll show an alternate way in a moment. So, notice what we have here. We have an if test within an if test. And this is where I really stress it's important to watch your tabs. It's very important that you tab uh, in once each time you have a curly, because take a look at our closed curly, curlies here. If the tabs weren't right, it'd be hard to line these up to the open curlies that they belong to. Now, we have an if test within an if test. That means if line 84 is going to execute, both of these if tests must be true for line 84 to execute, okay? What I can do now is I can do an else part. We know that if the user chose a regular cab, this will be true. If the user chose something other than a pre-runner, this would be false. And that would be a valid combination. Regular cab either with the 4x2 or the 4x4 is a valid combination. So at this point, we can start to construct our truck object. Speaking of which, we should probably make a truck object. So uh, let me make one of those. Create a truck object that we will populate. Okay, truck, my truck equals new truck. Okay, now on the else part, my truck set uh, let's see, set uh, cab type, and again, regular cab. There's a fourth time I've been redundant there. Actually, no, you know, this time I don't have to be redundant. Selected cab, and then my truck dot set drivetrain, selected drivetrain. So that's what the user selected. As a matter of fact, we can clean this up a little bit. We can clean our error message up. We can say sorry, but, and then plus selected drive train plus is not available with the selected cab type. 
So here we're at least cleaning up, we're eliminating a little bit of redundancy because we're using the variables that stored the user's choices above, and it looks like I might have misspelled one. Uh, what I thought I called that selected cab type. What I call that? Selected cab. Okay, selected cab. Pretty close. Pretty close. Okay, and we save. This is one way to do it. We'll take a look at a few other ways in just a moment when we go to the regular cab. I'm sorry, when we go to the access cab and the double cab. So I save, and now I'm going to run. We'll try it once with, let's see, that was regular cab. We'll try it with a valid combination. I should probably make a message if it's a valid combination. Regular cab, uh, 4 by 2 short bed, 4, 5, 2, 4, 9, 5 speed manual, that's fine. I should put a message there, but there wasn't a message. Everything ran fine. Now, let me try it again, but this time... I'm going to try it with an invalid combination. Okay, regular cab. We'll do the 4x2 pre-runner, which is not available in the regular cab. Short bed, that's fine. Zip code 10017. Uh, there we go, 5-speed manual. And here's our error message. Notice that this error message only comes up when we choose an invalid combination. What we have here is an if test within an if test. And that's fairly easy to read because you know that this must be true and this must be true for this to execute. On the other hand, this must be true and this must be false for the alternative selection to execute. Let's see how we can combine these though if we don't want to have a bunch of nested if tests. The next thing we want to look at is the access cab. So let's see what options we have with the access cab. Okay. So what's an invalid selection with the access cab? It's a little slow. It looks like the access cab, same thing, the 4x2 pre-runner is not available with the access cab. As a matter of fact, I think that's only available with the double cab. So we'll find out here in just a moment. Okay, yes, correct. Okay. Sorry, it's really slow for some reason. So access cab can't do 4x2 pre-runner. Okay, that's easy. Okay, so uh, what I'll say now is I'll make a new if test, and I'll say if selected cab equals... I'm going to do something a little bit different this time. Access cab. Uh, we'll do something a little bit different in just a moment. What I want to do is I want to combine two if tests. And when I combine them, I need an operator that I can use to combine them. So uh, do I have this on my slides? Do I have an example of a combined? Uh, one moment, please. Increment, decrement, eh, I don't think I do, but that's okay. If I want to combine two tests, I need either an AND operator or I need an OR operator. An AND operator is simply a double ampersand, like that. If selected cab equals access cab and uh, selected drive train equals... Uh, sorry, who equals four by two pre runner. Okay. Then what we'll say is we'll do our error message and I'll just copy and paste it because we've seen it before and there we go. Okay. Okay, and here we go. So now, this is similar to the if test above, except we've combined it into one line, and we don't have an else part yet. If selected cab equals access cab and drivetrain is 4 by 2 pre-runner, then we have an invalid choice. For this if test to execute, because we're using an and operator, both of these tests must evaluate to true. Both tests must evaluate to true. 
Uh, if either one of them is false, then the entire if test will evaluate to false, and it will go to the else part. And once again, for the else part, we can do a little bit of uh, copy pasting. Or, you know what, we'll just hold that thought for a moment because we're going to find a way where we can combine these and make these more efficient without copy paste. So, uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and do a quick else. Yeah, I'll we'll combine things in just a moment. I'll do a quick else. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy paste, and again, this is not the ideal way to do it, but we'll clean this up in a minute. And then J option pane, show message dialog, and we'll say null, and we'll say your truck has been created with plus cab uh, selected cab plus and plus uh, selected drive train and terminate with a semicolon. There we go. Uh, notice that my tabs are off. I want to fix that. So I do an Alt Shift F in NetBeans, which will automatically reformat. So let's try this. But this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to debug so that we can watch it happen. And I'm going to set a breakpoint on line 82. So we'll debug and we'll watch what's going to happen. Remember, where I set the Pepto-Bismol line is where the debugger, where it's, it's going to run to that point, and then the debugger is going to pick up, and it's going to let me take control from there. So right-click and debug. So we'll go ahead and go through all the prompts without any interaction from me. It's going to wait until it gets to that pink line before it starts to run. Again, if you have not learned the debugger yet, you're wasting a lot of time. You will save a lot of time on the programming assignments if you go ahead and try a few times to use the debugger. It's really a great learning tool. Okay, this time we'll choose Access Cab and let's do the invalid selection of 4x2 Pre-Runner. The others don't matter. Okay, that's good. Now, okay, now the Pepto-Bismol line has been reached, so it's turned green and it's going to let me make selections from here. So I'm going to choose F8, which is the key that will execute the current green line and move to the next and wait for more interaction from me. I choose F8. Did we say regular cab? No, we said access cab. So it will skip this entire if test and go to the next. See that? Access cab does not equal regular cab, so it skips that entire if block and goes to the next. Now, what, did we, what do we have here? Is it Access Cab and 4x2 Pre-Runner? And I hope I spelled that right. Looks like I did. Access Cab and 4x2 Pre-Runner? It is. So this should evaluate to true, and we should get our message. And there we go. There's our message. And then the program simply terminates. So I will terminate the debugger. Let's try again, but let's try Access Cab and a valid, uh, a valid drivetrain. Access cab, we'll leave it at 4x2, that one's valid. All the rest we can click through. Okay, mint green, again, we chose access cab. It's going to skip over regular cab. Now, we did say access cab, so this will be true. But we said 4x2, this will be false. Because of that, it's going to skip the if block and go to the else part. So I choose F8. And here we go in the else part, creating our truck, and then show a confirmation that the truck was created. Okay, terminate this. While we're here, let's also debug it again, and let's do one with a regular cab. So I choose regular cab. Uh, sure, let's say, let's, uh, let's go with the free runner, which is an invalid selection. Okay, and this doesn't really matter, and there we go. Okay, we chose regular cab this time, so this outer if test will evaluate to true. Now we go to the inner if test and we chose pre-runner so that evaluates to true and it gives us our sorry line. And there we go. Now because we chose regular cab it's going to skip over this if to oh boy we have a little boo-boo there don't we? If we chose regular cab and this isn't the end of the world but it's doing a little duplicated effort here because it's running the else part of the second if test. So we're going to need to refactor. We're going to need to clean things up a bit. And there we go. 
Okay, and then we terminate the debugger. Okay, so I promised to clean things up. Let's start thinking about how to do that. First of all, I, the 4x2 pre-runner is very easy to misspell. I'm going to right-click, choose Refactor. Um, this went off-screen, so let me move it over where we can all see it. Okay, I'm going to right-click on 4x2 pre-runner. Okay, Refactor, and I'm going to choose Introduce Constant. A constant is a variable where we define it as one value in one place, and then we can use it wherever we want. So I choose introduce constant, and uh, that's funny. Uh, normally, it would it would it tries to give it a name based on its value, but since this name started with uh, a number, it can't do that. So I'm going to have to type the number four x to pre-runner. We'll type it in as letters. Um, that all looks good, and I choose OK. Notice now that instead of the string literal 4x2 pre-runner, it replaced it with this variable. And if we scroll up, we're going to see that this variable is defined up above 4x2 pre-runner, and there we go. That means anywhere we see the string literal 4x2 pre-runner, we can replace it with this variable. Okay, and there we go. And we'll replace it here as well. And there we go. And so now, if we were to change the spelling, we only need to change it in this one place up here. And everything else is just a reference to that one place, which makes our program much more efficient, much more flexible. In reality, we should try to avoid these string literals in code whenever we can. It's much better to use constants when we can because we don't have to go searching through code and trying to change things manually. There's less chance for spelling errors and so on and so forth. Okay, wow. The next test is a little more difficult. We know that uh, if we have... So we'll go back to my Toyota here. If we have the double cab and the standard bed, notice I said and, then we can have the 4x2 pre-runner or the 4x4, but not the 4x2. Okay, no problem there. On the other hand, if we have the double cab and the long bed, then we cannot have the 4x2 or the 4x2 pre-runner. Let's handle that case first, because that one's going to be complex enough. Okay, and this one's going to be a little bit tricky. I'll warn you in advance. If selected cab equals. Okay, let's start, let's start by making some more of these constants. So regular cab, I'm going to make a constant out of this. I'm going to right-click, refactor, and it's off screen, but introduce constant. Regular cab, that's fine. There we go. Okay, so I scroll down. If selected cab equals regular cab, and uh, let's see, we had our bed length, right? So we'll say long bed, we'll make a constant out of this. Right click, refactor, introduce constant, long bed, that's fine. And what did we call bed type? Uh, let's see, the selected bed type. Yeah, selected bed type. And selected bed type equals a long bed and let's see now we're going to say the transmission uh, can be either I'm sorry we're going to say the drivetrain can be either the 4x2 or the 4x2 pre-runner it can't be either of those wow this is going to be an interesting one let me right click and refactor and once again I'm going to say introduce constant for 4x2 we'll call this 4x2 there we go okay for the uh, drivetrain right click refactor introduce constant 4x4 okay 
There we go. And again, these are all variables that are defined up at the top now. They're what we call constants because they're static, which means they can be used without creating an object of this class, and they're final, which means they can't change later. For constants, we typically name them all uppercase and we separate words by underscores. Okay. So back to our test. If selected cab is regular cab and selected bed type is long bed and uh, selected drive train equals 4x2 or the or operator is the double bar. That's the key above your enter key. Hold down shift, hit the key above your enter key and that's the double bar which is the or. And selected drivetrain equals 4 by 2 or selected drivetrain dot equals uh, 4x2 pre-runner. Hopefully I spelled that right. Okay, then we have an invalid selection. Oh, looks like I threw in an extra curly there. Hopefully that's all worked out. What am I missing? Uh, okay, I'm missing a close paren. There we go. Okay, in this case, we want to show our error message. Okay, otherwise, we want to go ahead and create the truck with these options. We might not worry about the short bed. I think we've, we, uh, the, the goal here is to demonstrate if test, and I think we're meeting that goal. So, uh, we might not worry about the uh, short bed configuration. Now, I have a problem here, though. And AND means if the left is true and the right is true, the whole thing is true. OR means if the left is true OR the right is true, the whole thing is true. I have a logic error here. Because what we're saying, what we want to say is regular cab plus long bed, we cannot have 4x2 or 4x2 pre-runner. But what would happen as it is now is... Um, any time we select 4x2 pre-runner, this right part is going to be true, which is going to make the entire if test evaluate to true, which is not what we want to do. Let me show you this in something called a truth table. Uh, okay, we'll bring up the old binary calculator. This just might take just a second. Remember this guy. I'm going to add a new tab, and we'll minimize him. Okay. So this is what we call a truth table. That means, how will these evaluate? So let's say I say and, and uh, I say uh, right side, left side, now shoot, go away. Okay evaluation. Okay. Now we'll do the same thing for OR. We'll put that over here. Okay. And then AND, if the right side is true and the left side is true, then the entire statement is true. If the right side is true and the left side is false, then the entire statement is false. If the right side is false and the left side is true, the entire statement is false. Fix that one up there. Okay. If the right side is false and the left side is false, then the entire statement is false. Okay, with an OR, I'll copy the same left and right sides. Oop, too fast. Okay, if they're both true, the whole thing's true. If right is true, left is false, it evaluates to true. If right is false, left is true, it evaluates to true. If both are false, evaluates to false. So, 
it's easy if we're combining like types. If everything here were an and, it would be easy because then every single test would have to be true. What gets a little bit confusing is when we mix ands and ors. Then it evaluates left to right. But the trick is for an or, either the left or the right has to be true for the whole thing to be true. So even if one of these were false over here, if we didn't choose regular cab or we didn't choose long bed, but we did choose pre-runner, this would be true. And because it's bordered by an or, that's going to make the whole if test evaluate to true. How do we fix that? Well, what we really want to say is, if it's a regular cab and it's a short bed, and the user picked either 4x2 four by four, uh, four by or 4x2 four pre-runner, then make the whole thing true. So we can trump the order of operations by using parentheses. And that's what we'll do here. Okay. Now what we're saying is if the selected cab is regular cab and the selected bed type is long bed and the user picked either a 4x2 or a 4x2 pre-runner, then the whole thing's true. Believe it or not, that subtle addition of these parentheses to evaluate the or separately and then return that result as a true or a false and then combine those with the ands, that's very important. And this gets confusing. Honestly, the only thing to do here is just to work through a few examples on your own. Um, even today when I'm programming something, if I do combinations of ands and ors, I really have to think through it and do every test and make sure I got it right. So we have to be careful for that. You have to be very careful and watch your ands and your ors. You may have noticed a little blip in the recording there. I realized after about five minutes of continuing to record, I made a mistake. And so I went back to correct it. Uh, here I had put regular cab and I meant double cab. So I have fixed that. So I fixed it and I've erased the recording where I did this demo with the wrong setup. So this is now double cab, long bed, and 4x2 pre-runner. Okay, let's debug this with a couple of options. We'll start with double cab. Uh, let's choose an invalid option, so 4x2 and long bed. Zip code will put in anything. And then 5-speed manual. What we're going to see is that it skips over the regular cab. It skips over the access cab and runs the else part, which we actually don't want. We'll come back and we're going to clean that up next. Now, let's look at this one at a time. Uh, let me rearrange here just a bit. Okay. Did we choose double cab? Yes, we did. Did we choose long bed? Yes, we did. So now we have two trues with an and. So that first and will evaluate to true. But we still need to evaluate the second and. And for the second and, it's going to take what's to its left, which is true, and compare that to what's going on on the right. On the right, within parentheses, we have an or, which means that Either one of these needs to be true, and it will return true. We did pick, I don't recall, either 4x2 or 4x2 pre-runner. We did pick one of these. So that's going to return true. It's going to be combined with the and for the other true, and the other true, the entire line will be true. So I choose F8, and there we go. There's our message that says that this is an invalid selection. Okay. I'll terminate the debugger. Let's run it again, but let's do it this time with a double cab that's a valid selection. So we say double cab, 4x4, four four, which is a valid selection, and long bed, put in some junk, that's fine. Okay, skip over the regular cab, skip over the access cab. Now, the double cab, did we choose double cab? Yes, that's true. Did we choose long bed? Yes, that's true. Now let's evaluate the or. Did we choose 4x2 or 4x2 pre-runner? Well, once again, let's look at our truth table, and we know that if both things in an or are false, the entire thing will be false. We did not choose 4x2. We did not choose 4x2 pre-runner. This or is going to return false, 
And because that false gets returned to where we have an AND statement, that means the entire thing is going to evaluate to false. And then we go to the else part and create our truck. And there we go. Very nice. Okay. Now we noticed a little error here, though, which is if I choose double cab, the if part here is false, so it executes the else. But we don't want to do that. We don't see we have a little mistake because here we may be configuring a truck with an improper configuration. The problem is we have three independent if tests. Okay, and because of that, each if test is going to run, and if it's false, the else part will run. We want the else part to run only one time, and that is if all the previous if tests return false. So we need to combine things. Let's start with this if test and this if test. Combining these is pretty easy. All I need to do, we'll take this if line up here, and I'm going to say else if. Remember how the rules work. An if test must have this initial if. It can have zero to many else ifs, and it can have zero to one else's. So now this is all one test, and the else part will only execute if this is false and this is false. That's the only time the else will execute. We still need to clean up a little bit because down here we have another independent if test with the identical else. So let's do this. We can only have one else per if test. One else, not an else if, but an else. We can only have one else per if test. So I'm going to remove this redundant else because remember, it's exactly the same as this one here. I'm going to remove the redundant else and I'm going to join the bottom if test with the top if test by making it an else if. Now you see we have an if, else if, else if, else. And the only way this else will execute is if this evaluates to false, this evaluates to false, and this evaluates to false. In other words, the only way this will execute is if we have a valid truck. So we've seen the debugger several times. Uh, I'll do one time in the debugger and then a few times without the debugger. So I'll choose debug. Okay. Um, and honestly, I really should clean up that regular cab nested if test as well, but I'm going to leave that in there as a learning experience just to show uh, what, a, what a nested if looks like. So let's choose an invalid combination access cab and 4x2 pre-runner. Uh, the others won't matter. Okay, that's fine. And what we're going to see is I F8. The first if test is false, so it skips to the first else if. That's true. So it shows our error message, and then it's done. Okay, let's do it again. And we'll go ahead and debug a few more times. Okay, let's choose access cab. This time let's tr choose a valid option like 4x4. Okay, that's fine. Uh-oh, come on, come on, come on. Uh-oh, my little box here isn't cooperating. Maybe we'll have to try this one again. Okay. Uh, all right, that's fine. We'll see if we can do this. Okay. So, first if test, we chose access cab, right? So this will be false. Second if test, we did choose access cab, but we did not choose 4x2 pre-runner. That means this part's going to be false. Since it's joined with an and, that means the entire test will evaluate to false, and it will skip this. Now, we didn't choose double cab, so now we go to the else part because we have a valid combination. And there we go. Okay, we'll terminate. Try it one more time with a double cab. Double cab. Let's choose an invalid combination 4x2. Long bed. Zip code. Okay. Transmission. Okay, this is an invalid combination. It's not a regular cab, that's going to be false. Not an access cab, that's going to be false. It is a double cab, long bed, 4x2, we should get our error. There we go, we get our error, and no truck is created. That's the way it should run. 
Now we try one more time. Let's try a valid double cab combination. So we'll do double cab, four by four, long bed. All right, that's fine. Now, it's not a regular cab, it's a double cab. It's not an access cab, it's a double cab. It is a double cab, however, it does not have the 4x2 or the 4x2 pre-runner. It has the 4x4. So we go to the else part, and we create our truck, and our truck only gets created once. So there we go, if tests. Uh, think of some quiz questions, suggestions. Um, actually, this one will be on the exam. So questions from this lecture will go on the exam. There will be an exam question suggestions that will be ready very soon. And... Uh, things to think about are the AND operator, the OR operator. An IF test must have at minimum the IF part. It can have zero to many else ifs and zero to one else's. They must go in this order. The IF first, the else ifs, and then the else. They have to be in that order. The else has to be last. Remember that an if, else, if, else is mutually exclusive. Only one of the tests can run. Remember that we can nest if tests. Remember what a single alternative selection is versus a dual alternative selection. Remember that with strings we have to use the dot equals or the dot equals ignore case method to compare. With numbers we can use greater than or equal to, greater, less than or equal to, double equals for equality, exclamation equals to say not equals, uh, and so on and so forth. Remember that it's a good idea to use parentheses when combining and and ors in a test. Uh, and I think that should cover it. So that should give us a fairly good set of quiz question suggestions. And uh, you can also think of ones for arrays. We also talked about constants today. And you see I've left a, a few items here that are not constants like short bed and access cab, probably be a good idea to clean that up. But we know a constant is static, so you don't have to make an object out of it. And final, which means once it's initialized, it can't be changed. And many times constants are used where we want to have the exact same string or the exact same number in different places. We like constants because they're very descriptive. The variable names are descriptive, and it's obvious what we're doing. So there we go. That's all I have to say about if tests. In our next lecture, we're going to talk about looping and iteration. Thank you.